Well, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you so much for choosing to start your day with us. Uh, we hope you learn a lot today about an exciting technology and its potential. Uh, I'm Eric Brown. I serve as the CEO of H2, and we're proud to be co-hosting this event with Imagine, who you'll hear from in a moment, and of course, in partnership with Mayor Rickman and the City of Columbia. So as our company name suggests, we started H2 a couple of years ago to squarely focus on accelerating the adoption of green hydrogen as a primary and sustainable source of clean energy going forward. And that sort of charter mission led us on a global search for top technology and talent to be able to make that a reality. And the great news is that that global search led us literally around the globe right back here to Columbia, where we found the amazing team in Imagine. So we're both South Carolina, both Columbia companies. So this is a great story for the Midlands. So today you're gonna to learn about our collective vision to accelerate the adoption of hydrogen and um, what we're gonna do with this technology to fundamentally change the conversation around green energy. So bear with me for a moment. I've got a little bit of basic science to go through. I promise to keep it light for you. But you know, as you're all aware, hydrogen has tremendous potential to serve as a, as a source of clean energy. Hydrogen has extreme potential to actually reduce greenhouse gas emissions across industries. And while it's the most abundant molecule in the universe, um, it has some unfortunate physical properties that make it really difficult to isolate, to transport, and to store. So over the past decades, engineers have come up with really creative solutions to that basic physical property. And what we do is we either highly compress it or we cool it down to make it liquid for transport and storage. But ironically, each of those processes actually has its own energy costs and has its own carbon footprint. So it's ironic that we're spending energy and, ex and, and making greenhouse gases all to move a green molecule. So the current problem is that the amount of infrastructure and cost, just like you see over here from the legacy um, refueling station, both the hard cost as well as the environmental cost to fight the physics of hydrogen all along that value chain simply won't scale. And it's never gonna allow that little molecule hydrogen to reach its huge potential. So this is the problem that H2 and Imagine have come together to solve. And we have a better way. So we store and transport hydrogen as a solid. Literally looks like this. So our solid hydrogen carrier has completely different physical properties compared to its less desirable gas and liquid cooled cousins. Namely, this is stable at normal pressure and temperature. So you literally can use standard cargo to move it around the world. I can literally FedEx it or UPS it to you. It does not degrade over time. So it now enables long-term energy stockpiling and can actually reduce energy insecurity around the world. And the best part about it is that it is actually much, much safer than gas or liquid. Again, note the warning signs to your left. So this can be driven through a tunnel as an example where compressed gas or liquid cooled hydrogen cannot. So that's breakthrough number one. Breakthrough number two is that Imagine has created a technology that turns this solid hydrogen carrier back to gas at the point of use when it's needed. And that will basically fundamentally flip the value chain, right? We can now convert it to gas at the point of use. We can distribute it in a safe, cost-effective, and now a scalable manner. So these technologies are gonna accelerate the adoption of green hydrogen to our mission and account for measurable greenhouse gas reductions in the decades to come. So before I turn the podium over to Ron and Imagine to describe their technology, I wanna make a few more comments. So this is a phenomenal story for Columbia and South Carolina at large two Columbia companies coming together in partnership with Mayor Rickman and his team to show the world that we are a center of clean energy innovation here in Columbia. And this story is gonna continue with the launch of our first commercial products as early as next year and the revitalization of this very refueling station where we sit today. This means jobs, this means lots of spin-off innovation and returns for our partners and investors. And ultimately the winner is the planet where we protect against greenhouse gas emissions for generations to come. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Ron Seftik, CEO of Imagine. He'll take us into the technology demonstration. Thank you. 
Why, thank you very much, Eric. Uh, my name is Ron Seftik. I'm the CEO of Imagine. Uh, we've been here in the city for oh, about 15 years now. We had a prior entity uh, where this all started. Let me go through the gestation, which I think is important to understand where, why we are where we are today and what we're introducing to you. So if you go back 15 years ago when this particular refueling station was put in place, what happened was that the world was a little bit different. They were looking for alternatives, and everyone was looking at hydrogen as the solution. And so this was a legacy way of doing it. They would produce hydrogen at a remote plant through very high energy usage forms like uh, electrolysis, steam methane reforming, and things like that. Well, and so what they would do is then bring it by a, a tube trailer, literally here, transport it, unload it back there, put it through this half a million dollar green filled compressor and store it in those tubes back there until it was used. That is still the way that they are doing it today with a lot of the money that is being invested by the federal government in, in the hydrogen infrastructure. We believe there was a better way. So what we looked at was saying, you know what? Hydrogen is embedded. It's always attached to something else. And we needed to find a different way of releasing it. We started out the original company with small portable systems. And then we started looking at saying, you know what, we could replace a fueling station with a simple, cost-effective way of doing this. And we developed products that look like this, which is our Gen 3 product, which will be great for stationary applications, refueling stations, for, say, forklift material handling. And with all the new companies moving into the state of South Carolina, great opportunity to place one of these in every one of those. But the original vision was really to do a port-to-port -port refueling network. What you have is that you have the Port of Charleston, which is one of the largest ports in the country. You have Columbia that's right in the middle of here in Spartanburg, Greenville, that has BMW and, and half the other players. You now have Scout coming here. This is the perfect location to have a port-to-port -port refueling network, which is right here. Again finding a way of creating that hydrogen, releasing that hydrogen, and using it on demand was the key. So we started with a larger system, and as we started scaling down, we looked at it, and you could build more pressure on a smaller device. And that's where this comes in, and we're gonna introduce, introduce to you in a second. I like to call what we're doing sort of the Tesla model. So if you go back, and I'm not a big fan of electric cars, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, and I'm not a big fan of them only because they use so much energy for the recharging and everything else. But I'm a fan of electric cars that use hydrogen. And that's because there is a huge opportunity to have a cleaner way of driving that vehicle moving forward using hydrogen and especially a low energy way of doing it. But what Tesla did is that GM and everyone else were developing big batteries to go in a car, nickel metal hydride and things like that. And Tesla came in and said, you know, I'm going to buy a bunch of used laptop batteries, put them all together, and create the first Tesla. And that's exactly what he did. So he developed the first Tesla. The problem was that there was no refueling network. I mean, you couldn't charge it anywhere. So what he did was, that with his own money, he started putting in refueling stations. So we've taken that same concept and said, you know, we should be able to do the same thing here at Imagine. And so what we've done, we've developed a small, compact unit that is highly scalable, that is modular, that can be transported anywhere, refueled at a moment's notice, takes almost no time to come up to pressure and hydrogen, and refuel or power different things like cell towers, uh, backup generation for hospitals, uh, material handling. There, there's a whole host of different opportunities that are sitting here with this. Not only that, but it's so safe it can be used indoors. So using it in a hospital, we've actually had pro some of the original product going patient bedside, uh, potentially going into high oxygen rooms, uh, operating rooms. So the opportunity is there to do, to change the whole paradigm of how people utilize hydrogen. So I'm not gonna take away too much thunder from my team, but before I introduce the mayor, I'd like to introduce my team real quick who really put this together. So we have the group over here from Douglas Fluid and Integration uh, so we have Richard and we have Scott. Nicholas in the middle it works for us. And then we have Dr. Gray over here who is our chief chemist. And then we have the man who did it all and I have to give him a lot of credit. And that's Mr. John Patton. And then so he will be the one talking to us about the technology. 
But this is a great opportunity, and the nice part about it, by the way, is that it's of such a modular nature, it is a perfect, perfect product to build right here in Columbia with our partners over at Flextronics, over at Flex. Because they're, they're here, this is what they do, and they are probably the world's largest subcontractor, and they're sitting right in our backyard. So we can really keep this, everything from sourcing to manufacturing right here in Columbia. And with that, we're very proud that the mayor and the city of Columbia have given us the opportunity to develop this. They've worked with us from the beginning and providing this particular site to test the technology and to introduce it to you here today. So with that, I'd like to introduce our mayor, uh, Mayor Rickman, and, uh, uh, and again, thank you very much, Mayor, for what you, everything you've done for us. Good morning, everyone. I, I really don't need to be thanking me. We need to be thanking Eric and Ron and the teams that are here today for what they're doing, because this is what's going to make South Carolina the number one state in the union. I also believe it puts Columbia in a better place. As you know, as a city, we have made a commitment to really not only innovation, but focusing on our environment as well, as we're the only gold lead certified city in the state of South Carolina. We want to be platinum. These type of collaborations help us look better in the eyes of the community. It is a recruiting tool. But what you really heard today is about collaboration, the collaboration of multiple groups coming together to bring technology not only into our community, but the manufacturing, the, the effectiveness, the, the cost effectiveness, the transportation, the ability that, that you could take product and mail it and send it all over the country for, for, for refueling. That makes a difference. The other difference is, is that we got two companies that are, are Columbia-based growing here, hiring here, developing here, and sharing that technology to allow us to, to get to our goals. Hydrogen fueling is, is growing. I see this containerized. If we talk about backup batteries, we talk about backup generators, we talk about future. Could it be in cameras? Could it be the batteries that we use in our phones? Can it end up being the fuel source for the future for a lot? I believe that that all happens right here. So I wanted to thank you all again for your continued efforts. I mean, I think we, we talked almost 15 years ago, Ron, when you first started working on hydrogen here um, with True Light. And here we are today with a partnership with H2 and imagine to deliver this. We're excited to reconstitute this project. Trains are always interrupting something in Columbia. If it's traffic, press conferences, but it's really exciting and I can't wait to continue to tell this story uh, across. I was in uh, New York City speaking on a panel with the governor of New Mexico, and they're putting lots of money into hydrogen, not only research, but development. They're very excited, and I was telling her about this project and that we had this old fueling station, and now we're partnering with two companies to take it to the next level. And she's like, I want to meet those guys, and you need to come out here. And if you've, have you ever seen her, she's about this tall and a pistol, but she is really bullish on the future of hydrogen, especially containerized hydrogen and what it can do for the future. So excited to continue to create partnerships across the U.S., but continuing to support this effort. And I want to thank you both again for making the investment, staying here and realizing that we can do this in Columbia, South Carolina.